Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show you guys how to make a fairy house. I was going to show you how to make a fairy house on a pre-assembled um, birdhouse from like Walmart, but I do not trust their methods of construction. <laughs> um, so I'm a big fan of waste not whatnot, so I wanted to um, show you guys how to salvage um, cause I mean, it was like a dollar and for the core, that's not that bad. I mean, it's almost cheaper to buy this than it, what it would be to get the clay to make the pieces. Um, and they are at least kind of structural. I was trying to drill some windows and Randy came and saved me from myself. And that's where we started running into some problems as he was using an actual drill. And I was like trying to hand drill it and these little staples that hold it all together were not having it. They were like, nope and the lid fell off and it's just, it's a mess. So what I'm going to do here is actually, ouch, hurt myself. Um, of course, there we go. Yeah, very important step. I'm actually just ripping the pieces apart because other than the little staples sticking out of them, um, there's no glue or anything holding these guys together. So there we go. And we will be able to use these sides as the kind of core bones of our piece like almost like um basic graham cracker house construction methods these will be our graham crackers and then we're just going to be icing it with the polymer clay or that's the plan so let's get started But what I'm doing here in the video is I'm ripping out the staples. Um, that way I stop stabbing myself with them. And uh, I'm using the granite like effects sculpey that has like it has like a little bit of like a glitter, but like some little like flakes and stuff. I don't I don't know. It's pretty nice. It looks like granite whenever it's baked and finished. Um, not planning on doing a whole bunch of rolling out of sheets, so I'm not actually clamping my pasta machine down to anything. Um, just kind of run in the clay through. I used a whole two ounce block for this. Um, so you can see I have it rolled out on the thickest setting and I'm just going through with a tissue blade and cutting incrementally this way as well as this way and it's not coming out a perfect checkerboard. I wanted some of the bricks that I'm making to be like very small and some of them to be very large. And now I'm going through and um, using liquid polymer clay, uh, translucent liquid polymer clay to just frost everything basically to give me a really good contact between the polymer clay and the wood um and oh man this stuff is like sticky and gross and so hard to get off so I use I use baby wipes and like rubbing alcohol <clears throat> but I'm just smearing it around all over this really cheap um birdhouse that I got in the crafty section at like Walmart like I kid you not guys it was like a dollar couldn't have been more than two dollars but uh whenever you think about you know how much Sculpey costs, and sent me a sock. Huh? It's probably a bag for it. Sorry, we got an, another camera, and Randy's unpacking it, and he's confused easily apparently. <laughs> um, so I'm coming through, and I have a background texture tool to that. I'm placing the bricks, and then kind of like smushing them with that texture tool to give it. It's, I use it for leather working. It does like a little bit of like a bubbly, bumply background. But again, gives it even more of the appearance of stone, I think. You could also go through and do the same thing with like a toothbrush, or you could make your own texture tools by ma basically making like a polymer clay imprinter and like sticking it onto a dowel. Um, and I'm going to try to do all of the sides like this. We had a little bit of a jump there where I'm going through and I'm just doing, pinching off little pieces and like rolling them and put them in like where there's like big gaps because I wanted it very, very irregular. I think one of these days I might make one, a, a fairy house that's like nice brickwork where it's all even and stuff, but today is not that day. Um, so yeah, I went through, I've got all four sides done now. Um, I'm doing the base, which I didn't really plan any of this out. So I'm just 
truly, truly making it up as I go. <clears throat> um, so I'm just going to keep placing more of the brickwork um, or masonry or stonework or however you want to call it. <sighs> and doing the layers of texture and stuff. And I have that stuff in the oven. I baked it for like 10 minutes in, in a cold toaster oven. Brandy's adorable, but I'm gonna shake him. <laughs> um, ooh, this stuff, yeah, cold toaster oven, two, 275, um, baking for like 10 to 15 minutes at a time. Now that greenery I was just showing you guys, I am so like blown away by, um, I got it at Michael's, it was on like 40% off, so, and it's like just this flat of like little sprigs that you can pull off, but so we'll be, we'll be talking more about that later. Now I'm working on the roof. I've just got a blend of like a bunch of different browns that I've rolled out on my thickest setting on my polymer clay, my pasta machine, and I've cut it into strips. And I'm like rolling it out into little snakes and rolling up the ends. And just right now I have no idea what I'm doing. Like not future Vaughn, but past Vaughn is just making it up. She has no idea what's going on and desperately hoping that this works out because already this tutorial is no longer a tutorial because I, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but like with the, uh, just getting the sides to bake together, you'll see it was a mess. Um, so I'm going through with brown acrylic paint. It's like burnt umber, I think, um, or something, a dark brown. Uh, and I put some in the cap and then I like squirt some water into it because all of my acrylic paints are about, about 11 years old at this point. Um, so most of them aren't very good for like making actual paintings with, but they're perfect for watering down into washes. Um, so I'm just going to keep, you know, getting it in all those little nooks and crannies, making it real globbed on there kind of, getting around all the edging, even the back sides too, I decided to paint. Um, just because you don't want to see like the white interior through the windows. Which the way that we drilled additional windows on this, and that's actually why the whole house broke apart. I think I talked about that. Pastor Vaughn talked about that a little earlier in the video. Um, so using a baby wipe um, to kind of paint back over it. If the acrylic paint gets dried on there too much, I just make a more watery wash and then like kind of scrub it in with I'm using like a stippling stencil brush. Um, but just wiping off all the excess. Now I have a bunch of like years and years ago I got a mixed cabochon pack like 500 grams of cabochons from firemountaingems.com and most of them were usable but there were a lot of like teeny tiny like I mean like two millimeter by five millimeter like really small for what I do with my wire wrapping so they've just been sitting up there in my drawers um of cabochons with nothing to do with them so I was like quick <laughs> and so I started sticking little cabochons in there. Maybe that'll make it look nicer. Like, because right now, I'm not too pleased about the roof. I mean, future Vaughn knows that I totally love how it comes out. But past Vaughn is getting pretty upset. And she's like, this is a lot of work. Like, I had meant to, whenever I was making this video, to have it be, like, where I'm talking to y'all and having it, you know, the whole time. But I became so absorbed in what I was doing that I just stopped talking entirely, which is why Future Vaughn is here to talk to y'all in her place. Um, and I'm doing lots of like swirls and wiggle arounds and there's no pattern. I wanted it to look very natural and organic. <laughs> and yeah, it's past Vaughn was stressing pretty hard on this, but power through it you can do this so on this the uh, other side of the roof I placed all the cabochons first and then started doing the little um, brown clay snakes around it I love my porcupine quill for um, kind of poking around and doing the positioning for all of the uh, the bits of clay and stuff I'm also, next time I get video like this, I am going to try to have it be a little bit more zoomed in. Um, just so that y'all can see better what I'm doing. But uh, with the new phone, I'm still getting used to the camera. So be patient with me like y'all always are. 
and just lots and lots of snaking and this whole time I'm like I really hope this comes out nice because I didn't have like a vision in my mind of how it was going to come out um so it's like a bumping around in the dark sometimes is what it feels like so just more rolling of the snakes and placing them and kind of putting it in putting in some cabochons where I can and the variety of cabochons is like there's a lot of glass a lot of gemstone a lot of like um like cat's eye glass and different things. So putting all those cabs off into a side project container. So here, whenever I was putting the four sides together, I started trying to do like, this is a piece and this is a piece and then there was a corner join. That did not work. It was disastrous and like fell over in the oven. Not completely disastrous, but so I ended up doing, like, if this is the front panel and this was the sides, the sides were nestled between the ends. So just if you're making your own, and it honestly, it was the way that the birdhouse was constructed, but I was going to try to get a little bit more floor space in there to um, be able to fit. I wanted to be able to fit, like, a LED tea light up into the bottom of it. That way, like, it would be lit up, you know? Not this time. <laughs> Maybe next time. So I'm rolling out some snakes using a lot of this liquid polymer clay. It was a brand new bottle and I used up probably half of it. Um, putting this house together. But yeah, as you can sign to see, I mean, it, so it's in the oven. Again, baking it for like 10 minutes. It was a little warm from where I had baked it before, but um, like I try to not do a preheated oven because especially with the wood on here, it starts smoking pretty easily. And I'm using that liquid polymer clay to do an edging around the uh, two roof panels. So this one came out of the oven and um, it was off camera, but me repositioning it, but you can see here now the way that it's sandwiched correctly. We got a 360 camera, y'all. We were so excited. Well, we were kind of really upset with how the video quality of the new phone turned out. So mm -hmm. hopefully this will take care of that. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm using a box knife to cut down. Fortunately, this wood's really easy to cut through. Um, but I'm just slicing a hole for the door that whenever you open it, to be like, oh. I didn't want it just to just be a door. Oh, spoiler alert. There's going to be an, a, a door that opens. <laughs> Sorry, you'll see. I know, right? <laughs> um, so again, doing a little bit more of the acrylic wash. Um, like a part of the door that I had cut off, I'm making like a step for whenever it goes into the house. And um, I wanna, at this point, I have decided that it's going to be an incense burner. So I'm um, filling in the gapping on the ceiling because I don't want any of the smoke getting out from underneath the eaves of the roof. I want it to be channeled through the chimney, which the way that we did the, I don't know if you can really see, there's a little hole that we drilled. It's a quarter inch drill bit that even after baking the polymer clay, we just drilled with a regular drill through and made that hole there. Um, so I'm just like smushing some clay around, more liquid polymer clay holds my universe together <laughs> so just smushing the pieces on and you can see me like tapping my fingers like thinking like what on earth am I gonna do next because this guys this end up taking me like four hours to make <laughs> which normally I can get a fairy house done in like two um and I'm trying to figure out how to make a chimney that's like open and hollow enough <laughs> um, that uh, the smoke will be able to come through. So what I end up doing, like using a dowel doesn't work, using the metal handle of my stuff. To, oh my God, Randy, I can still hear you slurping. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Randy's so sweet. So what I ended up doing was I got a plastic straw and I'll just go over here, he says. We love you, Randy. <laughs> um, a plastic, like drinking straw. Um, and I put a knitting needle up inside of it and then rolled the clay around it and then rolled that out And the reason I put the knitting needle in it was so the straw wouldn't collapse now at this point I have no idea whether or not that's going to melt disastrously during baking 
but I'm like, we'll see. You know, no time like the present to find out. I already felt like I was basically just going to trash this house anyways. Like, I was feeling very done. What I should have done was just walked away from it for a while um, and then come back to it. But I was persistent. Like, um, all my friends that I, like, text with, like, my angst, um, I, like, we're getting an earful about, like, how sick of this house I was. <laughs> um, I have cut out the front of a door and then a second thinner piece for the back of the door. And what I'm going to be doing, don't despair, you guys, I'm going to be doing a um, an in-depth tutorial on how to make a hinged door whether for in jewelry purposes or fairy houses or whatever you think you want to come up with. But, um, because this is like ultra duper fast forward. Uh, but I'm making the frame around the stiff mandrel of my thingamajig. Um, and then like, like every like fifth rotation, I'm having it loop off and then five rotations and then a big loop and then five rotations and a big loop. Um, and then I'm using my pliers to like flatten those loops down that way they can go in between the layers of the clay. Um, like I said, I'll do a, I'll do a more in-depth tutorial for you guys. Um, let's see. I'm trying to make sure the sizing is right. Because, again, I've never done this before, you guys. Like, this is so exciting. Um, and I'm cutting out, like, I stamped out a little porthole um, for the door. Because as an incense burner, you need fresh air to be able to come in as the smoke comes out because otherwise your ember will just die out and your incense won't burn. I'm using like a brush tool and some different textures to give like a wood grain pattern to the door. Um, some black eyeshadow for darkening down the edges. And for the cross beams on the windows and stuff, I'm just using more 18 gauge wire. That's the gauge I was using for the, the hinges and stuff too. Um, just adding some more layers of detail and texture. I have not baked the door yet. Um, so it's still kind of fragile. I put a little bit of an edging on it because I wanted to hide where those two layers came together. And just using another piece of 18 gauge, um, this is Parawire, which in my experience bakes really well. It doesn't affect the finish or anything, which is really good to know. <laughs> Putting a little floppy handle on it. And the way that I settled the, there's the hinges on the door and then like that post that the hinge is going to rotate on, I kind of embedded that between the front step and the rest of it. And we'll go more in depth here in a minute of how that actually gets attached. Um, at the time of finishing the video, I still have it where the base comes off of the rest of the house. I'm actually going through and hot gluing the house to the base that way it's just one piece and you don't have to worry about it like wobbling around and stuff so you can see here i used some liquid polymer clay over the spirals at the top and bottom of the door uh like hinge area and then layered a piece of clay over it i layered another clay around it like as a frame um checking the whole time to make sure that that door will still open and close adding in some different texturing and stuff the magic happens in the details, you guys. I've said that, like, I don't know how many times, but I can't reiterate it enough that it's, like, don't ever be afraid of adding just a little bit more texture, a little bit more detail, rendering it into something a little bit more real. Checking to make sure my handle's still floopy. Okay, so now it has been baked. The uh, piece of straw removed really well. Um, like, I just got in there with some pliers and like just pulled it straight out the center um, while it was still warm. And then the chimney kind of like comes out and then you can put it back in. Or have I not baked it yet? No, it looks like I have it removed. Well, that's what I end up doing, at least. Sorry, that's why I'm doing the voiceovers because I can barely tell what I'm doing. Jeez, Vaughn, get better with your camera angles. Gosh. Hey, baby, you okay? What happened? Apparently one of your bubbles fell in the night and there's glass all over the front porch. Oh no! Is it stuck in your body? No, I pulled it out. Ew, Randy's bleeding. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Okay. Are the dogs okay? Oh yeah, they're fine. I'll go out there with shoes and sweep it later. Okay, what's happening? I'm still, I'm just making the window frames. This is, 
behind the scenes action. This is how exciting our life is. is now Randy has to get decapitated. It's the only way to fix his broken foot. It's not broken. Not dead yet. I'm yes, you better. are. No, you're not. You'll be <laughs> any minute now. <laughs> okay, so I've put like the windows and stuff on. I'm doing like the texturing. Again, checking to make sure that door is swinging right. And I think that the first baking, the handle like broke off. So I'm redoing the handle. That liquid polymer clay is like the bomb, you guys. Double check and making sure it still moves. There I go, pull in the straw out. And now I'm using more liquid polymer clay to smush it on. I'm just adding some more little layers of detail. It's gone through another baking. So like total, I think I've baked this like an hour. Um, and it's still holding up just fine. I'm using more acrylic paint to darken down the bottom of the base because baking it, the wood with the label on there removed the paper and plastic of the label but all the ink still remained. And so I didn't want like a big made in China on the bottom of my, you know, the, the wood was made in China apparently, like the birdhouse was, but I was like, I gotta cover this up, <laughs> so acrylic paint. And I'm darkening down in the roof because I still, I was like, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I thought it looked kind of like, you just disproportionate. Like the door is so large and then the roof just, I don't know, looking at it now, I'm like, you know, it's really not that bad. But past Vaughn, who was working on this very house, was like so dumb. I can't even tell you guys how, how close to just being done I was. Yo, Randy remembers I was all kinds of grumpy, wasn't I? Mm -hmm. I was very grumpy. Whenever mm -hmm. I get done with this, I'll help you with your foot. Oh, my foot's fine. Okay, we'll get peroxide. And... Yeah, you gotta hop upstairs and get peroxide. Yeah, well, I'll do that for you. So you can see here, those cabochons and stuff really brighten up whenever I go through and uh, remove the antique. Um, I've got my glue gun heating up, and I'm picking out some different mosses and things. Um, I always, I like to have a nice menagerie of not just color differences, but texture differences as well between the different mosses. And I'm coming through and um, there's no metal in these little cast like plasticky florals that I had gotten a big mat of. Oh, there goes Randy. Um, but I still get there just with my wire snips to get a nice flush cut because they have that fine point um, and snip the leaves off. So I'm just doing on the bottom, like the underside a ring of leaves and stuff to come out to expand the base a little because this house is very top heavy. So I flip it over, double check the door again. I'm still so, like, I don't get sick of opening and closing that door ever. <laughs> and I'm coming through and just edging because the leaves are coming off the bottom and there's that raised platform at the base on the sides of the raised platform and putting down some hot glue and um, pressing in the mosses and stuff. And then I wanted to get some vertical action going because this house is very vertical. Um, so just taking one of those little grassy sprigs and like a glob of hot glue and just sticking it down in there. <laughs> Which I'd love to figure out a slightly more graceful way of attaching stuff. Same thing with the ivy segments. Like there was a way that I could place it where all the leaves were protruding out but it still made good clean contact with the house. So just a thin line of hot glue and smushing it in there while it's still hot. And then I take the ballpoint tool and actually use that to kind of drag some of the hot glue over the light, the stem part in between the leaves. And then coming through on the top center ridge of the house, um, strip of hot glue, placing the greenery. And as I'm doing this, this is when past Vaughn was becoming very converted into loving this house. Because it's looking more and more jungly all the time. Uh, layering leaf then like leaf 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 almost in like a herringbone pattern that you would do like with brickwork maybe um, just touching up some little I would snipped off some of the little ivy leaves and I'm just like sticking them up in the uh, underneath the eave of the roof so again like you like always I'm figuring out what's going to be the best camera angle and I really just I kind of wish I had like maybe some Google glasses that y'all could see through my face what I'm seeing. Um, but I move my head around so much too, I think that it might make y'all like seasick. <laughs> that y'all don't need to see how much I'm looking at my dogs, like gazing lovingly into their eyes during projects. 
Speaking of which, can you please stop licking your armpit? That sounds gross. Um, so I lay it on the side and I'm getting more underneath the roof. I really want this very three dimensional. I'm building up some more height around the chimney. This greenery is so much fun though, you guys. I think I'm going to use it pretty intriguingly in all of my work. Um, because unlike the moss, it's not going to dry out and fade over time. You okay, love? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just gonna go sleep oh, thank you, baby. I don't know why I thought I could walk outside here. Yeah, really. <laughs> so another one, just building up on the corners of the houses. Like this is gonna sound strange, but I am trying to incorporate some of the different like landscaping tactics for like making a house. Like landscaping is there to help a house look more like a part of nature, as opposed to just like sticking out like a sore thumb, like a, a concrete box that humanoids live in. Um, you want it to look like it kind of just grew up out of the ground. Um, at least that's what I go for. And so building in the sides, like diminishing the harshness of those corners, buffering the uh, the edge, you know, of how it, whenever it meets the ground. So like foundation plantings and stuff. And then throwing on a little bit of a living roof is um very nice. Just layering in some more moss. I love placing the hot glue, setting the moss, and then using a point to set it in. So back to past Vaughn. Hey everybody, so it took me just about all day. Whenever I initially started this project, I thought I was going to do like a tutorial the whole time and it became so mind consuming <laughs> that I was like, I can't talk through this. I don't even know what I'm doing. I can't, I couldn't even pretend like I knew what I was doing and like giggle my way through it the way I normally do. I was like, I gotta focus. <laughs> so, um, but Hopefully all the footage, I haven't done any of the editing yet, like I literally just finished it. Hopefully the footage holds through and y'all will be able to see the whole process and the future Vaughn is reliable the way she's normally not. Um, I will be going through and doing a voice a voiceover over a time lapse on this so that way you guys can still like get an idea and I can talk to you a bit about you know what my thought processes and stuff were. Um, let me bring this down a bit so y'all can see. And I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. Now we have the option here to put a candle. Like, as you can see, it's pretty narrow here at the bottom. So if you had some little LEDs, that'd be pretty cool that you could put up inside of it. But y'all, check this out. Huh? Ah, the little door opens. Boop, boop, boop. So excited. Okay, so now I have the little metal part from a tea light and some cone incense because we put a little chimney in here and I'm going to light my incense. Let it get nice and burning. There go. Now, ideally, I'd put some salt in the bottom of this um, little metal thing to help absorb the heat. But uh, I'm going to let whoever ends up winning this in our giveaway, I'm going to let them do that. Okay, so <laughs> this is where we start running into some problems. Um, mostly the problem that the bottom of my uh, thing is really narrow. So, hopefully, so I've got it kind of cinched up funny. Put the cone incense back in there. Set this there. I can actually open up the door so I can see what I'm doing. And that does fit over it. I'm gonna get my incense standing up properly because <laughs> it keeps falling over. There we go. 
Now I really hope that they will be... Are you even still lit? I think I put it out. <laughs> Knocking it over and stuff like that. Yeah, it's not still lit. Set it nice and gentle. Ah, I keep knocking it over. Okay, hopefully whoever ends up winning this will be more graceful with it than I am. So I'm going to close the door. Straighten this up. Ah, it's coming out the chimney. I don't know if you guys can see the smoke. <laughs> let's check this little guy out there is a lot of I hesitate to call it silk floral because it's not silk it's plastic but all of this like grass and different things I'm so pleased actually with how the roof did end up coming out because at first I really hated it um, got a nice little window here in the back Got leaves and moss and all sorts of stuff. So it just looks like a little, it looks like their house is on fire. Um, I guess I could have gone through and put some glass, glass in the windows, but um, I'm really pleased. You know, that way, because if I had put something in there, it would have blocked and it only let the smoke out the chimney. Pretty neat though, you guys. I'm pretty excited about this. <laughs> so yeah, let me get a little bit more full all the way around. I'm pretty excited about how this came out. I've never done one like this before. so cool okay <laughs> so um I I hope that something about this video was helpful to you guys if only to maybe get your uh, creative juices going and be like wow she made that way more complicated than it needed to be maybe if I do this it'll be better do it let me know how it goes like I love to see pictures and stuff of y'all's creations and um, everything like that so it's like please take take what I've done here and make it better um, <laughs> If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. Um, if you enjoy my free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, please check me out on Patreon. There's a link down in the video description below. And um, you can go and pledge as little as a dollar as... Blah, blah. You can pledge as little as a dollar a month to put your name in the hat for our fairy house giveaways. Um, <laughs> which is pretty exciting. Um... But yeah, if you pledge $1, it puts your name in the hat once. If you pledge $5, it puts your name in the hat five times. If you pledge $10, you still get your name in the hat for the giveaways once, but then you also get, like, kits and materials or, like, uh, gifts or all kinds of stuff. Like, this is an example of, sorry, our Celtic Star Kits. It's a little organizer. I have it wrapped up in saran wrap. That way it doesn't, like, and then tape. That way it doesn't spill everywhere. Um, but we do all sorts of stuff like that, you guys. Like wire wrapping, chain mail. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to put together a leather working kit. So if you guys are interested in getting into working with leather, um, that would be pretty cool. And the more you pledge, the bigger a gift or kit you'll get, which is pretty neat. So, um, y'all, I'm so excited about this. I was about this close to being done. I was like, I'm just going to set it on fire. Yeah. <laughs> intentionally this time not like the last fairy house that was like ah. <laughs> oh. but you guys look at the little door swings on its hinges oh. Oh. okay i hope you guys have a fantastic day if you want to support my work but don't want to become a patron just like and share and subscribe enjoy yourself that's all that, that's all i can ask really um you can find us on facebook 
Bye. I love you guys. Bye. Ah. <laughs>